Hello, Chuck here. I know I haven't made a video in a long time, but I'm back today with the video for May or Kamador. Today I wanted to start a new series of a deep dive into the Commodore pet. I get a lot of questions from people online all the time about repairing their pet or troubleshooting their pet. So I thought I'd start a series covering all of the basics, the steps going through to troubleshoot and figure out what's wrong with a Commodore pet. I also have a new camera and a new microphone, so hopefully things will look and sound a lot better than they have in the past. There are a couple of different pet power supplies. The original Chiclet pet has just a five pin power connector. And this pet requires only five volts for everything. Later pets, with dynamic RAM instead of static RAM have a larger power supply connector, it's more pins, and that is because they need to provide 12 volts and negative 5 volts for the dynamic RAM. Let's start off talking about tools. I see a lot of people online trying to troubleshoot an old pet, and they don't even have the most basic tools to start with. You'll need a basic assortment of hand tools, screwdrivers, wrenches, some needle nose pliers come in handy. Nut drivers come in handy too, but aren't strictly necessary. You should also have at least a very simple anti-static wrist strap. This one I think I got free with some kit or another and it just plugs into a standard power cord and grounds you with a one meg ohm of resistance. An anti-static work mat like this will often come with a wrist strap as well, which is even better. I'm gonna make sure you uh, ground yourself before touching anything that might be static sensitive. A basic meter like this one is super cheap. I've had this one for years and it's total crap really, but it's better than nothing and it'll get the job done. It's not auto ranging, so you need to know roughly the range of the voltage that you're measuring. But some people prefer that because auto ranging meters sometimes have some lag to them. It only has some basic functions like uh, continuity tester, so it'll beep. And uh, that's about it. It'll measure current, voltage, AC and DC. A meter like this one is really meant for electrical work, not electronics work, but this will still get the job done and these don't cost very much. It has your basics, ohmmeter, diode checker, continuity tester, We'll measure amps and volts in AC or DC. And this one has a uh, inductive current measuring clamp. This is the one I use. This is a Fluke 115. And uh, as far as Fluke meters go, this is sort of the bottom of their line, much more affordable than their high-end ones. And it has a lot of really good features on it. It'll measure frequency. So you can do a frequency check on things. You get, get a count of, uh, on the video signal or something like that. It has a capacitor checker and a diode checker. It's a continuity tester. You can do min max and peak hold. It has a backlight, so you can read it easier in low light situations. Millivolts, volts, amps, and AC and DC. Great little meter. Along with the meter, you might want to consider some extra Measurement probes. I use these quite a bit. These are little grippy clippy springs. So you can clip the leads onto a chip leg or a test point. These are a little bit bigger. Big old heavy duty alligator clips for clipping onto large points. And something like this is tweezers which lets you measure the voltage across small components while using only one hand. I always tell people the first thing you do is check the voltages. And we'll start with the mains voltage. Now I'm not saying you need to check your mains voltage, but you do need to check that power is getting from the wall to the transformer and it has to go through the cord, the fuse, and the switch first. The following applies to the United States only. I can't speak to the power standards in other countries. I have no expertise there. 
But in the US, you have three prongs on your plug. The large vertical one is neutral. The smaller one is the hot wire, and this is the only one that has power on it. And you have your ground wire. In the US, we're running at a roughly 120 volts at 60 hertz. The stated spec on the early pets is 115 volts, but now most homes run on 120 volts. So if the input to the transformer is a little bit high, the output will be a little bit high too. The hot wire comes in, goes through the fuse and the switch. Neutral wire goes straight to the transformer and the ground wire goes to chassis ground. I did this quick drawing to illustrate. So from the hot wire, we go to the fuse. That goes to the switch. When the switch is on, power is applied to the transformer. Current flows between hot and neutral, inducting current into the secondary windings on the transformer, and the ground wire goes straight to the chassis ground. If you're unsure about the fuse, just pop it out. A lot of times you can tell just by looking at it if it's blown, but not always. So set your meter to check continuity. And then just make sure the fuse is conducting electricity. One of the complications with the PET is that the rectifier diodes and the voltage regulators are on the main board. So you can't easily, you can't really check the regulator outputs before you plug it in. But you can check the AC input to the rectifiers. This power connector is symmetrical and it's designed to be able to plug in backwards without causing any problems. Either way, it'll still work and be fine. The two outside wires are the AC voltages, or AC voltage. The two wires inside from there are DC, and these just connect to the capacitor, and which way they go around doesn't matter. And then the middle wire is, the black wire is ground. So, you can't plug this one in backwards, but that's only true of the static RAM pets. Uh, that's definitely not true of the later ones, so they have a key on them. Here's a schematic of the static pet power supply. The two ground wires, pins one and five, have 18 volts AC. Those go through the rectifier, they come out pin four to the capacitor to filter and smooth the rectified DC, which should be around eight volt or nine volts, because this is only a half wave rectifier. So we're getting half of that 18. So after the capacitor comes back in here and then hits the voltage regulators, there are one, two, three, four separate voltage regulators. Each one feeds a separate part of the board. The pet is plugged in now. I'm gonna turn it on and we'll measure the voltages. Make sure your meter is set to AC. And right here, we're seeing about 16.4 volts. These two brown wires come down here to this connector. These two go up to the monitor So if we measure right here and here, we're seeing about 16.3 volts going up to the monitor. This is a nine inch screen. So 16 and 16. Now I wanna measure the unregulated DC voltage coming out of the rectifiers. So I'm gonna put this on the ground pin and I'll put this one on either pin two or four to get the DC. And make sure your meter is measuring DC voltages. And we're seeing 9.03 volts right on the money. So right here on the input, we actually measured 
a little over 16 volts AC, not 18. And right here we measure right on the money, nine volts DC. Also not shown on the schematic was the 16.3 volts running up to the monitor. On these static pets, there are four separate voltage regulators, VR3, 4, 5, and 6. And each one powers a different part of the board. One version of the schematic has these notes on it. VR3, row A, B, C, D, E, and F. So the voltage regulator further back here powers row A, B, C, D, E, and F. There's only F3 there. VR4 runs G2 through G9 and H3 through H9. This is row G here. So G2 through G9 is basically all of row G. And H3 through H9 is starting here through the end. Looks like VR6 actually powers the first few chips on row H. And VR5 powers I4 through the end, J4 through the end, and VR6 powers 1 through 3 and J1 through 3. So in summary, if I have this right, the first regulator all the way in the back powers everything from row F back. The second regulator powers row G, and the last part of row H. VR5, the next regulator, powers all of these chips from 4 through 8. And the very last one here powers the first three chips on both of these rows and the first three chips on row H. These regulators, the pin on this side is the output pin. So we can easily measure those, but we have to be very careful not to short the output pin to the middle pin, or we'll damage something. So I'm reading exactly five volts here. 4.9 over here. 4.9 over here. And 5.0 on VR1. So all four regulators are putting out the right voltages. We didn't find any problems, of course, because this one works just fine. But if your pet isn't working, this is the very first thing you should check, is the voltages. The later pets with dynamic RAM are a little bit different. The connector's not reversible, and it has a few extra pins on it. Although it is compatible to some degree because the first five pins are the same. Like the early pet, we should have 16 to 18 volts AC coming in here to the full bridge rectifier, but half of that goes down to the negative nine volts and half of it goes to the positive nine volts. And pin two and four are the capacitor again. We have an extra ground, a key, and an extra AC input, input here for the 12 volt, or actually 16 volts unregulated. One of the things that I should mention is that these old style linear voltage regulators require, I believe it's at least three volts higher than the regulated output. So for a five volt regulator, you need at least eight volts for it to regulate it down to five. Uh, and as I mentioned, AC voltages on the input vary, so the output on the transformer is gonna vary, so there's an extra volt of headroom. So that's why 9 volts here and the regulator takes it down to 5 and 16 volts here is for the regulator to take it down to 12. Unlike the earlier pet, we can't easily get to the outputs of these linear regulators. We can use these test points here to check the unregulated voltages and for the regulated voltages we're going to have to find these other test points. For checking the AC output of the transformer, like colors to like colors. And for this connector, I'll usually use these little nails. 
as a way to make the connection here. Just make sure nothing shorts out. So again, we're measuring AC. On the blue pair, we're seeing 17 volts. Schematic says 16. On the brown pair, 17.3 volts. Schematic says 18. And just like before, measuring the unregulated DC output from the rectifiers, 9.8 volts. If there is a problem with the rectifiers, if your meter has a diode checker, you can use that to check the diodes and make sure they're okay. Black wire on the side with the white stripe, you should see about a half a volt drop across the diode. Point 0.4 is good. What you don't want to see is an open or a dead short. 0.4 volts. Diodes generally drop from 0.3 to half a volt. You can see all these diodes are checking out just fine. If there was a problem with one of these diodes, we probably wouldn't be seeing that 9 volt DC on the rectifier output. Another place we can check the unregulated voltages are here on this uh, connector J10 and J11. Here on J10, pin 1 should be negative 9 volts, pin 7 should be ground, and pin 4 should be the 16 volts unregulated. So on pin 1, we're seeing negative 11 instead of negative 9. And on pin 4, we're seeing 20 volts instead of 16. Way up there on J11, pin 1 should be the unregulated 9 volts. And that's 9.7 like we saw before. So we can hunt around on the board all day looking for these little test points and maybe not even find them. Or we should be able to find all the voltages here on the dynamic RAM chips. Here's the pinout of a 4116 and these chips are all upside down, so I wrote it this way. VBB here should be negative 5, VSS ground, VCC plus 5, and VDD plus 12. And measuring these very carefully so I don't accidentally short any pins. Here we should have negative 5, and we got negative 5.1. Over here should be ground, so we shouldn't see anything. The back corner here should be plus 5, 4.91. And right here, 12 volts, 12.14. One of the things that we didn't check on this PET, the voltage is going up to the monitor. I'm clipped on back here to pins 7 and 8, measuring AC voltage. And running up to the monitor, we're seeing 16.2. Exactly the same as the earlier pet with a 9-inch screen. Later pets, like this one with a 12-inch screen, have a very similar power supply to the Dynamic Ram 2001 with the exact same connector and the exact same pinouts. So checking the AC voltages on this one is the same. One of the major differences on this one is the IEC type power connector. And this power connector has components inside of it that can fail and cause this to not pass any voltage through it. The fuse holder on these is just a little bit different as well. And you can see the label here is marked 117 instead of 115 volts. Since this is a 12 inch screen, I'd expect the voltages running up to the monitor to be slightly different. Those are on pin 9 and 11. Again, AC voltages. And that's 21.1 volts to the monitor on the 12-inch screens. 
This is a universal board. You can tell by this row of jumpers here. These jumpers allow Commodore to make one board that can be configured as an 80 column or 40 column. This is configured as 40 column. And if it was configured as 80 column, you'd see the extra video RAM chips in this area. The DRAM is at a different location on this board. They run vertically along the side here. You can still see the unregulated voltages on connectors J10 and J11. They're just in a slightly different place. Seeing negative 11.1 volts where uh, the negative nine should be, just like we saw on the other pet. Remember we're measuring DC now and we're seeing about 20 volts there where the 16 volts unregulated should be. And the positive nine volts is reading out at 10. The notch is on this side. So we'll go to the four corners of the chip again. That's negative five at negative 4.94. This side is ground right here. We have 12.03, and right here is 4.97. Your voltage regulators on the 2001 are VR3, 4, 5, and 6 is right here. And referring back to the schematic, VR3 and 4 are both 5 volt regulators. 5 is your 12 volts, and 6 is your negative 5. But because there are two 5 volt regulators, each one powering a different part of the board, just because you have voltages on your dynamic RAM doesn't mean you'll have voltage everywhere. So be sure and check voltages on all the other parts of the board as well. Now later pets like this dynamic board only have one 5 volt regulator. VR4, here's your 5 volts. VR2 is the 12, and VR1 is negative 5. So at least in theory, on the universal board, 5 volts anywhere should be the same regulator. So let's start with um, some basic troubleshooting. You uh, check the AC voltages on the connector here, or the two different AC voltages on the later pets, and you find nothing. No AC voltages on the connectors means probably a bad transformer or no power to the transformer. So check your fuse, check your switch, check your power cord, make sure you have power on the input to the transformer. And if you do have power on the input and you don't have anything on the output, then you probably have a bad transformer. What if my AC voltages coming into the rectifier are good, but I don't have nine volts coming out? Well, then you probably have a bad rectifier or rectifiers, or one or more diodes in here. So as I showed before, use your diode checker if you have one. On the Chiclet Pet, your rectifier diodes are right here. There's just three of them. On the later Dynamic 2001, you have groups of four. This is a full bridge rectifier, four diodes here and four diodes here. And you can see this one's been replaced because this one smoked and cracked in half one day. On the Universal Pet, your bridge rectifiers are right here. Each of these is four diodes in a single package. So you've got two full bridge rectifiers right there. So if your AC input voltages are correct and your diodes are all good, then you should have unregulated DC voltages coming out of each of these bridge rectifiers. And of course, if you have good unregulated voltages and no regulated voltages, then probably have a bad voltage regulator. Hopefully in this video so far, I've shown you how and where to check all the different voltages for the pet. And also hopefully shown you that even though some chips have power and you may even have some kind of picture on the screen, that doesn't necessarily mean that all the chips have power. So you could still have a bad regulator somewhere with some partial functionality. So it's always very important to check your power supply first. I guess that's it for part one. In part two, I'll start covering some of the troubleshooting and verification steps on the digital side. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And if I've made any mistakes in part one, 
I can put an addendum in part two. Thanks for watching.